Suppose you're an analytical chemist and you get called out to a site where there's been a horrible chemical spill and your job is to figure out what the chemical is. Well, you know, you could eat some or something like that, put some on your skin, and that might give you some information, but let's look at a piece of information that you might be able to get that might be a little less dangerous. And that piece of information uh, is the analysis by mass of the various elements that make up the molecule. So, for instance, here's a problem. The analysis of a compound, and let's not worry about the analytical te technique at this point. And we find, though, that it consists of 39.9% carbon, 6.7% hydrogen, and 53.4% oxygen by mass. Okay? What can we learn from this information about the unknown compound uh, in the chemical spill? And these kinds of problems are what are known as empirical formula questions. I'll define what empirical formula is in a moment, but let's go through the mechanics of taking these pieces of information and getting something that looks a little more familiar. Now, the trick to working empirical formula problems is to assume some certain mass of material. And 100 grams is very convenient, so let's assume that our sample consists of 100 grams. Why is that useful? Well, if we assume that our sample consists of 100 grams, since these are all percentages by mass, that 100 grams consists of 39.9 percent, uh, excuse me, 39.9 grams of carbon, 6.70 grams of hydrogen, and 53.4 grams of oxygen. Okay? And these add up to at least pretty close to 100 grams. So all of our mass is accounted for. Now, these things in grams, mass, it's okay, but it's not really useful. Remember that if we're trying to understand about the composition of a molecule, how many atoms of a particular kind of molecule, what we need to do is we need to get this into moles. And the way to get into moles is to take the masses and divide by the molar mass or multiply by one over the molar mass, and that, looks like this. So I worked this out ahead of time. We take the mass of carbon, 39.9 grams, times one mole over 12.0 grams. That's the molar mass of carbon, and that gives us 3.33 moles of carbon. Similarly, for hydrogen, uh, the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01 grams, so this represents 6.63 moles of hydrogen. Again, it's that the mass of hydrogen we had in our 100 gram sample, 6.363 moles of it was hydrogen, and finally 3.34 moles of it is oxygen. Okay, what does that get us? Well, it tells us something. It tells us that the relative ratio of atoms in our molecule is um, 1 to 2 to 1. It's exactly the same as the ratio of the number of moles of atoms in our sample. Okay? So the way we do this is if we imagine that our sample consists of 3.33 uh, moles or molecules of carbon to 6.63 molecules of hydrogen or atoms of hydrogen start again. 3.33 atoms of carbon to 6.63 atoms of hydrogen to 3.34 atoms of oxygen. And we can't talk about fractional oxygens and fractional carbons, but if we divide through by 3.33, we can see that this becomes CH2O. And again, this represents the ratio of atoms in the molecule. Now, this is not the molecule. Why is it not the molecule? Because it turns out any um, product of these numbers and a small integer is also going to give a molecular formula that's the same as this. This is what is known as an empirical formula. And if you didn't understand that last statement, don't worry, because I'm going to come back to it. I want you to go over this thing with me. The molecular formula inch. is the exact atomic composition of the molecule. So here's a molecule of benzene and has exactly the composition C6H6. That means six atoms of carbon, six atoms of hydrogen. Here's ethanol. That's the uh, molecular formula for ethanol, ozone, chlorine, and formaldehyde. The empirical formula, which is what we derived in our calculation on the previous couple pages, is the formula of the molecule written with smallest integer subscripts. Okay? And why is it written with smallest integer subscripts? Because it turns out we're limited in the amount of information that we can glean from 
the analysis by mass. In other words, this just happens to be the best we can do. And what we saw on the previous page is that the empirical formula for our unknown compound is CH2O. That means for every carbon atom in the molecule, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Now note that this empirical formula also happens to be exactly the molecular formula for formaldehyde. So it might be that our compound is formaldehyde, and formaldehyde does happen to be a colorless liquid. But note that CH2O is also the empirical formula for a bunch of other molecules. So here's uh, a molecular formula for acetic acid, and it has exactly the same ratio of atoms. And remember, if we did an a, uh, analysis of this and by mass, it would have the same composition by mass as the unknown problem. In other words, this has exactly the same empirical formula as CH2O.